one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. $10,000 you put in the budget this year. Compared to what we spent on other things. <laughs> we could have that to a code green. That's right. So we got Mark Cloder from here. Okay, good evening and uh, welcome. I'd like to call to order the Stephenville City Council to our regular business meeting here on Tuesday, September the 2nd, 2014. At 5.30 p.m. And welcome everyone tonight for joining us. And uh, we've got a full agenda this evening. And uh, we'll uh, go through several things through the night and just like to thank everybody for being here. And we'll, uh, we'll start tonight with uh, citizens' general discussion. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to come forward and uh, make some presentation to the council, you can feel free to do so at this time. Yes, sir. Just state your name and... Address for the council. Sure. I'm uh, Eric Jackemeyer. I live at uh, 7428 Meadow Road in Dallas, Texas. Um, I know you guys have got a full agenda tonight, uh, but about, and, and some of what I say may actually be germane to what you're talking about tonight. So, about two and a half years ago, I stood here and told this council that I would build a student housing development that, uh, that Stephen Mills would be proud of. And uh, thanks to seven forward thinking supporters that night, uh, especially the mayor in his very first meeting who wrote or uh, cast the deciding vote twice that night. Um, I've done exactly that. And if you've not buy, been by Mustang Ranch yet uh, for a tour, I'd be thrilled to show you what I modestly think is the finest development in Stephenville. Charleston State uh, University is especially happy with that development. And Dr. Bertami told me last weekend that he sees Mustang Ranch as a critical piece to their further expansion. To those naysayers who told me that there was no market here and the students could not afford our rents, I can only say that we were 100% pre-leased the first week of April, uh, which is almost unheard of in my business and about four months ahead of schedule. Uh, but beyond aesthetics, let's talk about what our development has done and will continue to do financially for the city of Stephenville. Uh, in the 13 months of construction, we had more than uh, 12,000 worker days, which is one worker on site for a day. Uh, and since most of our workers come from out of town, or came from out of town, that equates to an awful lot of hotel rooms, restaurant meals, gas purchases, and grocery purchases that simply would not, would, would never have occurred without our development. Uh, and I've been told that the standard multiplier is about three uh, for that economic impact. Um, these numbers are hard to quantify and always seem like kind of an economist report to me. And, you know, so here's some really hard numbers. Um, our construction purchases have pumped close to $100,000 directly into your sales tax coffers. $100,000 directly into your sales tax coffers. Uh, no multipliers, hmm. that's just plain cash that you guys can spend. And going forward, we'll likely pay more than $300,000 a year in property taxes, which will pay for a lot of budget items. Uh, we'll reduce the need to increase your taxes on your constituents. Uh, and as I've promised, uh, we've supported many, many of the uh, area's nonprofits with contributions, and I know I owe you guys. Yeah. Um, He'll collect. Let's talk about that. We'll talk about that afterwards. Uh, yeah, Angela just sent me that. I know you're good for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know where we live, right? Uh, and so just like two and a half years ago, I've spoken too long, and so I'll just end with a heartfelt thank you, uh, and that we're happy to be here. And uh, lastly, on a personal note, I would like to add that I finished up my private pilot training and 45 year dream at your excellent airport. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Uh, oh. <laughs>
Oh, I ask you a question. It's not relevant to what you're talking about. Did you say you live on Meadow Road in Dallas? I do. That's fairly close to Preston Road? Uh, actually, I'm more towards uh, right at the corner of Bodecker and... Uh, and that doesn't, they don't have any curves on, those, on that street, do they, Meadow Road? <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got curves uh, where we are. Do you? But not back up towards Preston Road? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. We we got to get on with What's tonight. We got a lot to talk here, about. Uh, I, Eric, I'd like to uh, thank you for coming tonight and and giving us those those facts. I I do appreciate the the uh, the results of, of the development. It is impressive over there, and and it was also nice to to show up the uh, the night for the kickoff and see that President Otavio <clears throat> and Rusty Jurgens were there talking with you and the partnership that's developing between the university and Mustang Ranch uh, will work well for the community. So, so thanks for that effort. And, uh, you know, we, we're, uh, we're better off today because of that. So. Anyone else for citizens general discussion tonight? <coughs> All right. If not, then we'll move on to the Erath County appraisal district annual report. And uh, ask Mr. Lee to come forward. So, Jerry. Hello. Good evening. Well, as you said, I'm here for my annual report to let you know what's going on with property values past year and maybe in the future a little bit. I um, wanted to tell you let's see, since 2008, the Fresno District has not increased values across the board on any property. 2014. In 2013, the Comptroller's Property Value Study came back uh, for Stephenville ISD because it just it just studies school districts, it doesn't study cities, but uh, for Stephenville ISD it includes Stephenville City. So those numbers came back and Stephenville ISD in 2013 in that property study fell outside my confidence interval. Now, it did just barely fall out. That, that interval gives me a 5% leeway. And uh, it was out, you know, just a, just a few hundred thousand dollars. So it was, it was really, really close. Uh, we did manage to uh, find some errors in the report and get that uh, back into the confidence interval by a small margin. But as long as you're in, you're in, and you're good. So. But what that report told me is, well, and, and I kind of knew, because I looked at the, the sales information in 2013, and I knew things were beginning to increase. The market was beginning to look better. The, the economy was beginning to look a little better. And, but, but it was so borderline that I didn't do anything in 2013 across the board. 2014, after getting that, I knew I was going to have to do something, and we did. And uh, for all the results of that, the city received a taxable value increase of about $22 million. And it, the, the city's total market value is um, $1.6 billion, and the total taxable value in uh, the city of Stingville is, is a little over $1 billion. Um, there has been 15.6 million held off the row at this time. Of that, those, those are properties that were still under protest when we certified. 13.2 uh, million of that is going to go back home because we've already settled those values and come up with the numbers. So uh, you got a 13.2 million dollar present coming after the first supplement. Okay. Uh, the tax pool increase would have been greater uh, except that we had uh, a couple of big businesses that uh, had decreases in their personal property inventory of uh, 44 million dollars so that knitted out at about a 22 million dollar increase but um, in, in addition to that the, uh, the city grants a free port uh, to businesses here, it totals about $120 million. And uh, 
offers abatements to one company that owns $27 million in thousand dollars. And then, of course, all the rest of the commissions fall under homestead, uh, code exempt, like churches and schools, that kind of stuff. That, that's what makes up the difference between $1.6 billion and $1 billion. Coming into next year, um, the sales that we've seen so far are all over the board. And it's really difficult with that being the case for me to tell you what's going to happen until I get to look at it a little harder, which I do in about April, March, April. So I don't see much sense in, in studying it too much until it's all come in and it's all said and done and then we make a decision on what we're going to do. Um, if, if I was making a decision right now, I probably wouldn't see much of an increase, but things can change going on. We can see. I would be glad to entertain any questions that you have about anything that I do. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. That, that, right. that $44 million that went backwards, so to speak, was that one of the companies that left town? No, that was um, okay. companies who had very large inventories last year that dropped them back this year. Okay, thank you. Okay. Other questions? Sounds like the IRS has its way that churches won't be exempt any longer and those, our tax rates will really go up. That's just, that's just a political side note. That's Gary, I'm sorry. sorry I don't mean to put you in the spotlight, but you know. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is, <laughs> unfortunately. Other questions? Jerry, you mentioned the 13.2 of the 15.6 back on the rolls. That that means you've settled the uh, the questions there, and so the the one billion five million that we had will be one billion eighteen million. And then, do you look to resolve the rest of that by the end of the calendar year? Is that? No. Uh, Total that was held off, just the part that was held off, right. was 15 million. Right. And, and we have settled all of those down to, and, and it comes up all but a couple million. Two. Okay. That 13.2 million will be added to the 1.6 billion. Okay. So it's not much. Right. 1.6 billion. But, but the point is that that outstanding number is resolved yes. for, for the most part. And yes, so it is for. Completely okay. Right. That's good. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay, thank, thank you. Thanks for having me. Golf and leg. Okay, I'll, uh, Mayor. Yes, I would move approval of the uh, Central Appraisal District Annual Report. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. McDaniel, seconded by Mr. Pendleton to approve the. Annual report from the Erath County Appraisal District. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Right, that motion carries. Unanimous vote. All right, we'll move on now to the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, section of the agenda. And I'll open a public hearing at this time to consider a request to rezone from B1 Neighborhood Business District to B2 Retail and Commercial Business District. Uh, located at 1616 West Lingleville Road. <coughs> and uh, ask Ryan to just come forward and give us a report on that, please, sir. Okay, uh, the property is part of the John Blair abstract 32. Uh, so it's not a platted piece of property within the city limits, but it is acknowledged as a lot. We've already got all that information taken care of. So from that here. Mohammed Dean, representing NetWest Incorporated, is the owner of the property located at 1660 West Lingleville Road. The owner is requesting a change in zoning from B1 Neighborhood Business District to B2 Retail and Commercial Business District. The comprehensive plan projected land use for the property is commercial. Uh, there is an existing commercial structure on the property with a fuel island and canopy. That structure has four commercial suites in it already. One of them is occupied, and I think one of them is tentatively occupied at this point. Uh, the occupied one is a fuel service station. 
water and sewer are already provided from mains in West Lingleville Road. The uh, street frontage is on West Lingleville Road, a 110 inch foot right away. Fire protection is already provided at the northwest corner of the property to show on the map. Uh, the existing zoning in the area, B1 and R3 to the west, and then B2 to the east and south. Planning and Zoning Commission is recommending the approval of this request. Uh, the commission vote was unanimous of the seven members present. And I'd be glad to answer any of your questions if you have any. Okay, any questions for Ryan? Yes, sir. Mr. Nix. Ryan, the, looking at the map, there's a little narrow strip on what I would call the east side of that property. Right here? Yes, sir. But it ties into the property behind it, is that correct? <laughs> Yes, that is the driveway for that property. That's how this property can be back here. That's their access to the road. Okay, so it's not part of the rezoning because it's no. part of the other property. Yes, sir. Okay. That is their driveway. But it's zone B2 also. Yes, sir. The, the drive and, and the- that, I believe that is a flatted lot. Uh, I have to look for sure, but uh, actually that property is- <coughs> Okay, all right, thank you. Any other questions for Ryan? Okay, thank you. All right, uh, at this time I'll uh, open the floor to anyone that would like to come and speak in favor of the request. All right, so just uh, come to the podium and state your name and address. <coughs> Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the request? All right, anyone wishing to come forward and speak in opposition to the request? All right, seeing none at this time, I'll close the public hearing and consider a motion. Mayor. Mr. Hogan. I move that we adopt ordinance number 2014-19. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Hogan, seconded by Mr. Pendleton. We uh, approve ordinance 2014-19, rezoning from B1 to B2, uh, the property located at 1660 West Lingleville Road as briefed. Any discussion? Mayor, I would just like to say I'm abstaining from voting because I own adjoining property. Okay, that abstention is noted. Okay. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, that motion carries unanimous vote uh, with the abstention from Mr. McDaniel. All right, that'll close the Planning and Zoning Commission portion of the agenda, and, and we'll move on now to the public hearing on the tax rate for 2014. And at this time, I'll open the public hearing uh, and entertain anyone wishing to come uh, and speak at this time. Okay, seeing none, I'll uh, close the public hearing on the tax rate at this time. And uh, I guess for, uh, for purposes of the agenda, we've got uh, Mr. Savine, our Finance Committee Chair, just ask him to just go over the tax rate numbers for uh, 2014. Thank you, Mayor. If everybody will look at your budget cover sheet, which looks like this, if for those in the audience, uh, I'm going to go over just quickly. There is a statement at the top, which is a requirement by the state of Texas that says that this tax rate that's being proposed will raise an additional $190,000, which is a 3.2% budget increase over last year. Let me give you a quick, just a quick overview of the information so that we can consider that. I believe it's the next, is it next week or in two weeks? Two, two weeks. Two week, in two weeks, we'll consider a tax, tax rate. 
The information that you have in front of you is that the current budget uh, is based on a tax property tax rate of four forty nine point five cents per hundred dollars valuation of that four point nine five percent that generates for us four point nine seven seven nine that four million nine hundred and seventy seven thousand nine hundred and sixty five dollars in revenue that we'll spend in this year's uh, budget which we'll vote on here in just a little bit. Uh, we do have to state in here that there is a, an effective tax rate, which means basically we could charge uh, or set the tax rate at 48.24% or 48.24 cents per hundred, which would lower our revenue out of our current budget of to $4,851,058, which would be a reduction of $126,907 in revenue that we've uh, budgeted to expend in our, our current budget. We'll vote on here in a minute. That is not a, an ex, uh, a terrible amount of money to, to find, but uh, what it would mean is that we have in the current budget, which we'll vote on again in a minute, $105,000 new, new dollars in planning. We have $186,000 in new programs. We have over half a million dollars in capital replacement projects and uh, $500,000 in capital improvement projects. And so that'll mean that we'd, we do have some funds we could do it if we needed to. However, our budget is based on the 49 and a half cents per hundred dollar valuation of which at the bottom I'd like to just note that 5.7 cents per hundred dollars valuation is debt service. That's a little bit different than last year, but the total dollars is 582,204 versus 582,283 from last year. Effectively the same, paying the debt for, for uh, loans that we have made. Okay, any, any questions for Mr. Savino on that? Okay, I guess there's nothing that says I can't have a second public hearing or reopen the public hearing. Can I reopen the public hearing? Yes, sir. Okay. Based on that brief, I want to at this time reopen the public hearing on the tax rate and see if there's anyone that would like to, to comment. Probably should have done the brief first anyway, so. Okay, seeing none, then I'll close that uh, public hearing on the tax rate for 2014. And uh, we will, again, as Mr. Savine said, uh, in two weeks on uh, the 16th of September, be, be voting on that tax rate. Uh, all right, the next item on the agenda is to consider approval of ordinance number 2014-20, which is adopting the annual budget for the fiscal year uh, 2014 and uh, ending in September 2015. And I've asked uh, Mr. Savine as the, as the committee chair for finance to, to give us a, uh, an overview this evening of the content of the budget. And uh, I will start by saying that, and Walter uh, is here tonight with all the, the hard questions. If they come, you, you, you've, got, uh, you've got Doug's back, I know. I appreciate that. Uh, I just want to start this uh, this budget discussion by uh, by saying a couple of things. Uh, the council uh, and the staff have worked uh, diligently since June on this on this budget, which is a good six weeks earlier than than prior budget efforts, and uh, that was intentional uh, because this year's budget. Uh, in, in my experience, working city budgets took a very uh, a significantly different course, and and that was not to not to belabor the the question of what should the tax rate be, but to ask ourselves the hard question: What does the budget need to contain to support the community? And with that ensued a page by page review of the budget. Every single page was looked at by every single council member and there was discussion uh, on that budget. Uh, the other thing that we used, I think, that is significant to note and guide our discussion was to back up and say, what are we trying to achieve? And um, it's really important that the budget addresses the needs of the community. And so we spent some time and agreed and actually discussed it here in the council chambers 
to formally approve a set of goals for the, the city budget. And our, our effort during this budget time was to ensure that those budget goals were achieved as a part of the, the content of the budget. And uh, what were those? There's, there's six of them. They're listed in, in the front of the budget, but let me just go over them briefly. First and foremost is to ensure the long-term financial health of city government. In other words, is that means we need to take more than just a one-year view of what the budget is and make sure that as we lay out a plan, it, it allows us to be financially healthy. And uh, we feel like we've achieved that goal. The second is to ensure that we provide quality public safety for current and future <coughs> residents. Uh, that's why when you look at the budget, the, uh, the dominant uh, amount of expenditures go toward fire and police to ensure that we have a, a safe and secure community. And we feel like we've achieved that. Uh, the third item is, is arguably one of those that has been um, left out of prior budgets or has been um, limited in its, in its focus. And I'll be honest with you, I think it's something that, that the, the council is taking a multi-year view at. And you'll, you'll hear some of that as, as Doug talks to what, what we're doing in this area. And that is to sustain infrastructure enhancements. That includes streets, water, and sewer. Uh, as we move forward. And so this year's budget reflects uh, some dedicated money towards streets that did not exist previously. And we, we've got a beefed up effort in, in water and sewer, which is, which is important. The fourth area is to improve quality of life and appearance of the community through community partnerships and grants. And that's an area where uh, we're able to leverage other, uh, other funding sources to improve our community. And we, we have targeted a couple of those specifically. And we've also ensured that those quality of life programs are supported within the budget. The fifth item is active economic development uh, by promoting development or redevelopment. And uh, this budget does include specific dollars toward economic development. And uh, so that, that area was addressed. And then last but not least is comp uh, st strong comprehensive planning to promote orderly growth in the future. And the budget, again, addresses this area so that we're not just looking at this year's needs, but the needs of the community into the future. And so this, this budget and the discussion was, was not just a, a, a simple exercise or a, a debate of should you raise taxes or lower taxes and let's just uh, publish a budget. No, it was, it was a, uh, a very detailed look at each of these areas to ensure that the community is being supported a lot of great work, number crunching on the part of the staff to support and, and dialogue between the directors and, and the council as we went forward in the, in the budget. And so I just want to thank the council uh, for their efforts um, leading up to tonight, uh, realizing that there, we didn't agree on everything. Uh, but what we did do is agree uh, to, to move forward in a budget that we feel is in the best interest of the community. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for that. And so with that, let me, let me turn the, the floor over to Mr. Savine and let him go through some of the more detailed uh, elements of the budget and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, I want to thank the directors for their hard work. They put in lots of hours preparing their uh, needs list, their wish list, and then spending arduous amounts of hours listening to the council members, particularly me asking why and why not. I want to especially thank Walt Walter for his uh, work in this process. I want everybody here in the audience to know that every night that we'd make a change, he had to go home and figure out what the difference was and what it cost us and how that affected our budget. And I want to appreciate that for the work he did. And tonight, jump up and down and wave or something if I say something really, really bad. <laughs> okay, that, that's a start, okay. Uh, I want to talk about the, the last three months the council's been through what I consider to be a ringer. Uh, talking about this budget. Uh, before we started the budget process, we spent three arduous nights talking about historical trends, uh, what our revenues are like, what our expenses are like, what the, what's the possible revenues in the future. We, we did a long-term vision for the city of Stephenville uh, to come up with a budget preparation. Then we spent three more meetings talking about all the requests that were made, what our needs were from each of the departments. I'm going to guess that we probably spent 25 hours as a council at large, and I know many council members uh, that are up here tonight spent uh, dozens of other hours going over budgets, talking to department heads, and doing research. 
And tonight I'm, I am proud to present to the citizens of Stephenville a budget that I think, first of all, maintains last year's services at last year's levels. We're not reducing services. We're going to talk a little bit uh, a little bit later about some revenue sources, but we are not reducing any of our programs. And, and the most important thing is I can say to the citizens, we are not reducing the safety uh, or security of the city of Stephenville. We have maintained both of those and done so well, I believe. Uh, we've done that. Where we've taken lots of hours uh, going through, and I can tell you that some of the council members up here did exactly what the mayor said. They went dot and tittle through each of the budget items. And that's a good religious term, but it was applied to our budget. And I appreciate the work that they did because they asked some really, really good questions. Not presented in this budget, but which will be voted on, well, I say voted on, will probably be discussed uh, this next year. Uh, during this budget cycle will be two great projects that I believe need to be, just be mentioned. And that is a runaway extension project that will be funded by TxDOT and uh, joined by the city of Stephenville. And that number will be somewhere between $500,000 and $750,000, give or take a little bit, to extend the runway, which will put us in competition with places like Mineral Wells, uh, even I think was it someone tell me Hamilton has a better is it which Hamilton has a better airport or longer runway airport than we have so we'll be spending some of that money in the next 12 to 18 months just wanted to make that mention we also have committed to uh, the Bosque River Trail uh, continuing that project we have discussed that we have not uh, set an actual number yet but we anticipate somewhere around five hundred thousand dollars both of those sets of funds will come from unrestricted net assets that we have, which I'll refer to several times tonight. I call that money in the bank or just cash in the bank. Um, also not identified in this budget were lots of other requests that would probably equal tens of millions of dollars. And I just want to mention some of those because it alludes to a little bit of what the mayor talked about a moment ago. For example, if you go look to the city count, if you go up to the city office and talk to Cindy, she can show you the parks master plan. There are millions of dollars in improvements to our city parks that would be a good thing for the city of Stephenville, which I think would help both the quality of life and also economic development. But in addition to that, something that has been a focus of this council and also some of our staff are some infrastructure needs that we have. Right now, as an example, we've kind of, we're going to, I'll talk a little more detail in a minute, but we have probably a million dollars a year in needs or more just in street repairs. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit more in detail in a minute. We also easily could spend another $8 million on repairing sewer systems that are in the city of Stephenville right now. That's not growth. That's just repairs. Uh, for those who don't know it, uh, I just happened to walk out of church Sunday morning. And now and as we walked out, we were greeted by about eight inches of water running down is at Green Street. And it's because we had a great water break. And that's just an example I hear that we've had a similar one. Uh, over on Gray Street in front of the church building, First Baptist Church, we've had one on Graham Street, etc. That's just an example of the deteriorating infrastructure of our city. We've not addressed those in great detail. We've done, we have some money here to do that. During the next 12 months, the Finance Committee is uh, dedicated to working with the council and particularly with staff to come up with a, an extensive capital replacement and improvement, capital improvement plan that we'll present hopefully as part of next year's budget. Now I want to get to some of the specifics of this year's budget. In April, the, probably the largest single change is in April, the city council, I think it was April, we passed a, a resolution uh, or ordinance which, changed, which created a pay plan for our city employees. Uh, we looked at the possibility of funding that over four or five years. The council thought it was important that we do that in two and a half years. Again, based on some planning and some projections and everything in budgeting comes down to projections. At the end of the year, you have... Uh, Un, you have unrestricted assets that you can use when you're off a little bit. And so what we decided to do is pay that down in two and a half years. And I'm pleased to say that the council this year, this council, which is quite different in personnel, our personalities, has decided to continue that. And in this budget, we will buy down one more year, the two and a half years worth of pay plan for the employees. Now, if you'll turn with me to page 16 in your packets agenda. I'll go over to some of the quick items. We have some, we have four major categories. You'll see them in columns there. I want to talk about them in uh, a little bit more detail. We have $25,000 set aside for a pavement plan. The purpose of that is right now, I just mentioned it, or just a moment ago, I mentioned that we need to spend about a million dollars a year. 
we don't have a million dollars a year. We're not even sure that's exactly the number. It could be 800,000, it could be a million and a half dollars. We don't know. This pavement plan will look at identifying existing streets, needs for repairs, et cetera, and we'll identify uh, a plan of how to accomplish that over a long-term uh, period. We also have $75,000 for a land use and thoroughfare plan. <coughs> any good city will know that, or any city knows that to develop the future for Stephenville or their city, they've got to know where the streets are going to be. And so as Stephenville grows, as we need a thoroughfare plan, we have one that's grossly outdated. And so we've uh, uh, appropriated $75,000 to develop a land use and thoroughfare plan. We also have a $5,000 uh, set aside for a long-term study for the needs of water for the city of Stephenville. Everybody hears about water. You listen to the news just recently in California. Uh, it's getting to be drastic out, in, out there. So we believe that we have good water and good plans for our water for the future. We have purchased some land recently that's 500 and Allen, 34 acres, I think. 400, 536 acres that we'll be able to bring some water to the city of Stephenville with this $5,000 will hopefully help us make a long-term plan that takes us out decades into the future to shows us what our, what our needs are. Under new programs, one of the things I want to mention here is that our directors, and there are several of them, have been driving their own vehicles at their own expense other than when they go out of town. And so we have in this plan $3,600 a year per director that will be reimbursed uh, at a mileage as a given mileage reports for the details of that will be coming from a later council we have ten thousand dollars for training for our current building officials so we can get certified we have a report called iso i believe that's correct is that right iso report and that report identifies some of the needs of training and so we have identified we've uh, set aside some money to do that we've put ten thousand dollars in the budget for an enhanced nixel for y'all for the citizens who don't know this you can text into Nixle right now. One of the officers here, or the chief, will be able to tell you how to do that. And you can sign up and you'll get announcements all the time about things like road closings, uh, emergencies, weather problems, uh, et cetera. And this $10,000 will enhance that program. And if I'm correct, will allow us to upload all the phone numbers from our exchange here. Is that correct? Cover landlines in addition to landlines and addition to cell phones so you don't have to sign up then what will happen is you just you get on there automatically <clears throat> yeah. the uh what it, what it also does is allow it will allow us to put out messages to specific areas of the city for example if in one particular neighborhood we were having a gas leak and we we're going to have to evacuate <coughs> that particular neighborhood the messages would go directly to all the people living there rather than blasting everybody across town and if you've not participated, I encourage you to sign up now. You can, like I said, there's a phone number you can text and you'll get on that list. We also have $50,000 to kickstart economic development initiative. That's what we're calling it in the budget. We've kicked this around for the three years I've been on council. And this year we've decided to, uh, to set aside $50,000 and our plans are to join in with organizations like Steadco, the Chamber of Commerce, TSU, ERAF County, and others that may arise in the near future. And we're going to begin recruiting new businesses and also figure out how to grow existing businesses in the city of Steamville. If you'll remember our audit presentation from the CPA a few months ago, one of the things he mentioned was, I don't remember the number, I didn't go back and look, I should have asked Walt, but he, t he gave an estimate of how much sales tax goes from Stephenville to Granbury to Weatherford, Fort Worth, et cetera. So we're gonna to try to capture some of that as well. We also set aside $75,000 to evaluate our water system. We have $578,000 plus dollars in capital replacements. That is including things like our uh, police department has, sir, how many vehicles a year do we replace? Is it three a year? Uh, if you haven't seen them, I've, I've seen them jump curbs and et cetera, chasing down bad guys. And a vehicle, police, police car is a very difficult, you know, it, they wear them out quickly. We have some other equipment, which includes uh, landscaping equipment, et cetera. Uh, the, police, the fire department has a heart monitor. How long, how long, those, long do those last, Jimmy? Is it 10 years, you said, ever? About every 10 years, we replace them, and we have how many now? Three. Three now, so this is a three-year replacement plan. We also have $250,000 to rehab some of our streets in Stephenville. And notice, remember, note I mentioned that we have probably a million dollars in needs out there. And so this will only help us do some of that work. And we have $250,000 set aside to rehab some water and sewer lines. 
And I mentioned earlier about what happened on Sunday morning as an example of that. Now, if you would turn with me to page two of the budget. Or your packet, I'm sorry. I believe it's page two. It's, it looks like this. I think it's this page. Page two. Page two in your packet. We based our budget on sales tax. We based it on property tax and some other revenues. I want to, it was a good to note tonight that we, if I remember, if I had calculated correctly, the adding back a, that $13.2 million will generate about another additional $66,000 in tax revenue, property tax revenue. Uh, we believe that our budget is not a soft is not a soft number. It's a real hard number, but there will be some things that go on during the year. As an example, uh, the sixty-six thousand or plus dollars, give or plus dollars, from property tax. We also have budgeted one hundred percent of our personnel costs, which means every employee is funded for twelve months out of the next year. And as employees turn over, we do accrue some of those expenses. There's some overtime associated that comes back out of that. But in some years, that number of accrued uh, expenses, accrued <coughs> revenue, non-spent expenses, uh, is equal to as much as $200,000. Now, if you would turn with me to page, I think it is 11 in your packet. I want to just mention for just a moment one quick thing. If you'll notice, that our beginning, this, the, the item I want to talk about specifically is our, what I'm going to, I'm going to start count, calling an unrestricted uh, net assets. In other words, money in the bank. If you'll look at it, we'll notice, you'll notice that we have six, estimated $6,369,000 in the bank at the beginning of this fiscal year. As we go through the projects, all the expenses that we spoke about, uh, the projected revenue, not counting any additional revenue, such as if we sell more water, for example, or, you know, or if we have uh, some more sales tax, or if we have some accrued expenses that are expenses that we don't spend the money on, uh, that could be adjusted some. But if you'll notice at the bottom of the page, there are, uh, on the bottom right, it'll show that we have a ending cash balance of $5,834,680. Now, we have some other funds, capital funds, special revenue, debt service, water, sewer, storm water, landfill, et cetera, which means our total revenue this year will be less than, will be $462,419 under our expenses. We're going to spend $462,000 more money than what we generate this year. And that doesn't include some of the other projects that I've just mentioned, such as water and sewer, if we have another main break or some other problems like that. Uh, so I just want everybody to know that we will be spending $462,000 out of our unrestricted funds. Now, with that in mind, is there any questions that I can answer anything that I've, Walter, I fall on my face? All right, any, any questions? Any questions about the I don't mean to put you on the spot, Mr. Savini. Please but, do. But I will. The four hundred sixty-two thousand dollars we're going to take out of reserves. Just, I just want to chew to because I know you're good at this. Assure the public that there's still plenty of money in reserves. If you'll notice that even after spending that, we'll end up with five million eight hundred thousand dollars in the bank. And I asked, I had a conversation. I, I visited with Walter today. It, it, uh, in great detail, but also I went and visited two other CPAs in town that many, most of y'all in this room know. And I asked that question about what we've used the term reserves. <coughs> reserves assumes that you have a requirement to hold money back. There is no state or federal requirement for us to keep money in the bank. There is none. We as a city have decided as a city council that we're going to keep three months of operating, general operating expenses in the bank. And that is, I don't have that number. I think, Walt, it's about $3.2 million. Yeah, the current budget is $3.1 million. So that's about what we're Did going to say, Walter, three of the current budget, the current budget it would be $3.2 million. 3.2? So that means we need to keep in the bank. What that says is, if, and I asked the question of the auditor mm -hmm. when he came at his presentation a few months ago in, in great detail, what's the purpose of that, that reserves or those reserves? And his comment was, well, if a tornado came through and blew away the city, you need to operate for three months. That's about how long it takes the federal government and the state government to come in and help take, out, take over or to give you, or that's how long it takes you to borrow money, et cetera. So we need that much money, and that's what our city council has decided we'll keep in the, in the bank. 
Uh, what that also means then is the difference in those are still unrestricted and we have uh, agreed in, in principle, though we've not voted on it in this council yet, to spend the money on some projects like $750,000 to $750,000 on, on a runway expansion or extension. We've talked about $500,000 depending on the cost of uh, land acquisition for the Bosque River Trail. And there's some other grant opportunities that will come up over the years, uh, over the year, and that's where those funds are used for. So we're in, in to answer your question, Mr. Hogan, we're in great financial condition, and uh, thanks to both uh, staff uh, assistance and the way the council has been very conservative in some budgeting. Uh, you, you may have mentioned this, and I may have not, not noticed it on the airport. Uh, you, we're, we're spending supposedly half a million or so. Uh, some version of the government is spending, what, nine times that or how much? I think it's a 10 percent, 90 percent match. It's a 90 10, right? 90 10. Okay. So right. we'll spend 500 to $750,000. They'll spend, 90, you know, nine times that. It's a great thing. And every, I've listened to people from Tarleton, from the large industries in town, et cetera, and even some of the people who rent and use our airport, the runway extension will be a great boon to our economy in Steamville, Texas. People start drive, flying here rather than landing in mineral wells and renting a car. I have a question, Doug. Yes, sir. Maybe Walter can answer it. On page 12, the property tax amount there of uh, $4,341,477, is that based on the certified tax roll? That is correct. Okay, and we learned from Mr. Lee tonight that the $13.2 million adds another 66000 Well, I, I did a $100 valuation. It's about $66,000. Okay, so we have an extra $66,000 to lower the tax rate with? Well, we haven't realized any of it yet because the bills hadn't been sent. That is correct. That is correct. Thank and we're basing that at 97% collection, 98% collection. Mm -hmm. So that, that number will change to right around 4.4 4 .4 million, I guess, is what we're correct. talking about. That is correct. And sales tax could go up two hundred thousand dollars as well, or it could go down a hundred thousand. We haven't seen that in the past very often. As a matter of fact, our sales tax revenue will, is going to be about a hundred thousand above our budget this year. So we'll have about a hundred thousand dollars more in sales tax this year than we budgeted. However, if you'll remember, in the past we've budgeted as little as four point seven million dollars in sales tax. So we increased our budgeted. Uh, our budget of how much we expected the revenue to be by probably six hundred thousand dollars this year. We pretty well stretched that number, but there is some play there as well, a little bit. So the answer about I mentioned earlier about the tax rate that is there is some options there, but I would want us in that conversation to talk about budget as well. Or, I mean about needs as well. Okay. Other questions or comments, Mayor? Mr. As, Hogan, as personnel committee chairman, I just want to commend the. Uh, council on, on a very friendly budget for city employees. We talk about, you know, our main priorities as council members are to keep the citizens safe and provide high quality services. And the best way we can do that is by recruiting and retraining high quality employees. And, and you look at what this budget does for our city employees, Mayor, it, it institutes uh, the first full year of the pay plan, which is, which is huge. And I know there were some folks critical of the pay plan that we instituted, but I'll remind them that we hadn't done anything in four years. And the pay plan that we instituted gave everyone who was below the median average in the survey a bump up to that median average, which I think is important. Um, the car stipends, number two, I think that's a, that's important for our directors. They're out on the roads. I'm going to see if Tarleton might give me a car stipend and, and use that as leverage. And, and the third thing is something we're going to vote on later is two additional paid holidays for our city employees. So you, so you look at this budget and our most valuable assets are city employees. This is a very favorable budget to our city employees. So I commend the council for that. Thank you. Other questions? Other questions or comments? With that, no other questions then. Can I, can I then, Mayor and City Council and citizens, I move that we adopt ordinance number 2014 20, which is the annual budget for fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2014, and ending September 30th, 2015. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Savine, seconded by Mr. Pendleton to adopt the uh, ordinance 2014-20 for budget fiscal year 
beginning October 1st, 2014 and ending September 30th, 2015. Any discussion? Mayor, I have another question for Walter. Okay. In view of the additional un unreceived at this time, $66,000 in our budget, is that going to change the use of reserve from 462 down to closer to 400,000? That would be a correct assessment, assuming we do no mid-year budget yet. So that would reduce our 462 to $4,000. Okay, but what we're voting on shows 462. That's right. We're just underestimating our uh, tax, property yes. tax collections. But we did not find out how much we were, of that $15.6 million under protest, we did not found out that we had 13.4 coming back on board. We did not, we did not budget for that. Well, I think we ought to give a half penny back that was overcharged last year on the tax rate, Mayor. I don't know if we have five vote votes to do that, but I would enjoy hearing some discussion on it. Okay, so is the is the proposal to amend the budget to say four hundred thousand or to to uh, what, what what's your proposal? I would prefer to leave the the reserve number just as it is and uh, at 462 yes and I would enjoy hearing discussion on uh, reducing the tax rate to 49 cents and then I'd be glad to make a budget amendment if it seems to be enough interest in that so what does what does 49 cents do 49 cents takes uh, about $49,000 uh, off of the tax tax rolls because a half a percent, one percent is about 98,000, a half, half a penny is about 49,000. You've still got about 17,000 there extra. But uh, I believe our, in, in agreement with uh, Casey, our number one asset is our employees and right up there with them are our taxpayers and our property owners. And this is not information that we had when this budget was finished in uh, budget deliberations. Okay. Um, so I take that right now as a point of discussion. Uh, not, I don't hear a motion. No, I haven't made the motion. I'm just entertaining, asking for uh, input from other council members. Mayor, I think we have a motion on the floor without a second. Yeah, we, we got a motion uh, I second, I second the and motion. a second. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. So the motion was made by Mr. Savine and seconded by Mr. Pendleton. And so uh, what we have right now is, is discussion going on against that uh, main motion. And that's whether to adopt the annual budget. And Mr. McDaniel has uh, made a comment about <clears throat> the, the impact of the property tax revenue related to the existing tax rate. Is there any other discussion? Mayor, I have a question for Mr. Thomas. If, if, I'm, if I move to table the motion and it passes, can I introduce a budget amendment at that time? Well, it's my understanding that any motion to table has to be voted on before the original motion is voted on. If there are five votes to table, then we're back where we started before the motions were made and budget amendments can be heard. Am I correct? Well, we, I can entertain a motion to, to amend uh, the existing motion, but it will require a second. Um, we put it on the table and you can't. Right. That was the question I think. Okay. okay. It is. So it's not yeah, necessary to table. No, you can, you can make your motion amend right now. Mayor, I move we amend. The, the I, Mr. McDaniel, I haven't recognized you okay. yet. Okay. Um, I've got a comment about your statement. Can I, can I make a comment? Uh, yeah, first? go ahead. Uh, and I want Walter to verify it, which is probably not fair to do it in a public setting like this. I believe if the tax rate is 
49 and a half cents and the effective rate is 48.24 and that's 126,000 bucks. I believe lowering it by half a penny would be $50,000 in revenues. What did it generate? Yeah. I, I, I believe that that's pretty accurate. About $50,000 is what it would reduce our revenue on proper, from property tax. And so what you're asking then, if I want to just for clarification, Russ, is what you're asking is that we take the 50000 or whatever that number is, the $66,000, if whatever the number actually ends up being the certified tax roll, you're saying take that number and put it in the budget and reduce the expenses by an equal amount of dollars or whatever, which would then allow us to lower the tax rate. I don't believe we have to reduce expenditures by any amount. I didn't say that. 66,000 in surplus revenue. I don't think I said that. What I said was, it looks like if the revenue is correct, that we're gonna generate another $66,000, if that's accurate, then you're saying that we should reduce our, in our tax rate, if we reduce it to half a penny, that would be saving, taking off the revenue about 50,000 bucks. So you're saying it's about a wash, is what you're saying. It'd be actually a, a net $16,000, if those numbers are fair. Is I'm that what saying you're saying it's a $50,000, $357 savings for the taxpayers. Mayor? Mr. Rogan. How does that affect the, uh, just curious, the uh, public hearings on the tax rate? We can, we can now say it's 49.5. We can now say it's 49. Do we then have to have an additional hearing? Uh, just as a point of clarification, are we allowed to do that after the hearing process has started? So the, Sandy, you know. I don't know what the answer is. I know that we have posted publication yeah. requirements, and if we're going to make a change right now in the tax rate, yeah. I'm not certain how we go about that. I just know that there are requirements that have to be met. Can I make a clarification or ask clarification? My understanding is we could pass the budget tonight. If we had do a change in the tax rate, we can do a budget amendment at that point. Is that correct, Walter? It's an, it's an approved or adopted budget. Why couldn't well, you? I, again, I thought you might, this question might come up today, but I didn't have a chance to take a look at it. I, I think the law is that you can uh, uh, pass a tax rate that is lower than what you have posed and we've advertised if it's lower. And, but if it's higher, you cannot. That's correct. But I haven't looked at that. Well, that is accurate. Right. Last year, last year was done the opposite. It was uh, it was published at forty eight and a half, and then changed to forty nine and a half. So I would think it would work in the converse also. I don't remember that. But it was mm -hmm. in here as a motion. It happened. Well, so we're we're, and that's why I didn't recognize your motion is because we are we are discussing the budget, not the tax rate. And the motion that's on the floor is for us to accept or uh, to approve or disapprove the budget. Now, the, the public hearing tonight was, was on the tax rate. The vote on the tax rate will occur on the 16th. So if there is, an, if there is a different tax rate that's accepted uh, or approved on the 16th, then, then the budget will be uh, amended accordingly. I mean, that, that's, that's the, the cart and the horse of this. We, we've discussed this in previous budgets about which should we do first, and this is the order that we've agreed to to present this, uh, recognizing that this might this, this might present itself as a as a scenario that we would then have to go back and look at the, the assumptions in the budget. I think so. it's I think it's odd, Mayor, that the state always gets the comptroller to just say, "Here's how much money you have," and then you set a budget. And that's what our track tax rate does, which is what Russ is asking about is, right. you know, when you mentioned the cart, I don't know if cart before, you mentioned the cart before the horse. <coughs> and so what we've done is we've said, here's how much we need to spend and how do we go get it, which is part of what Russ is saying. And we've got 66 more thousand dollars potentially in certified tax rolls. So it's just, it's just too, in my opinion, it's, it's cart before the horse that we should have determined what our rate income was and then decided on the budget. But that's just my personal opinion. Mayor, I'd be glad to vote on the budget and give the rest of the council two weeks to consider uh, lowering the tax rate when we vote on it on the 16th. 
-hmm. And I believe that if we lower the tax rate and the revenue's not there, it'd be just like if sales tax went down. We, right. If we lost $200,000 in sales tax, we're going to take it out of unrestricted funds. We're not right. going to... I mean, that's all we can do so, is just so go in get a the sense, revenue. And, Mr. Savine, that's, that's a very important point. In a sense, they are independent of each other because this, the property sales tax rate is, is um, contingent upon the collections. It's an right. estimate. It is an estimate. And so is the sales tax, which it's is an estimate. It's an estimate of projection. That's right. 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 And so we, we shouldn't, I don't think we should bind ourselves unnecessarily or restrict ourselves unnecessarily thinking that we can't do one without the other when in fact they we can do both and I think that's why uh, the approach we've taken is acceptable to be able to look at the budget with revenue projections and then then address the tax rate as a separate separate item so Mr. McDaniel if that's um, acceptable to you uh, based on your <coughs> comment uh, I'll just see if there's any other comments about the about the budget Okay, hearing none, then we'll proceed to vote. Uh, all those in favor of, of uh, approving resolution 2014-20, uh, adopting the annual budget for fiscal year uh, October 1st, 2014, and ending September 30th, 2015, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, that motion carries unanimously, uh, approving the budget as presented. And uh, Mayor, I will get with Walter here in the next week before the council meeting in two weeks and make sure we all have information about that. Okay. About his question. Okay. Um, now I don't want to get, um, I don't want to get in front of um, the, the discussion about the, the tax rate, but I do want to highlight a couple of things that were in the budget that we just approved. And I want to reiterate these because I don't want anyone to miss the significance of what um, has been said about the budget. Um, and I, you know, I appreciate your comments, Mr. Hogan, about the pay plan, but, but I would also uh, argue that the, the second um, or the, the third thing that we talked about within our priorities for the city was to ensure that we had uh, an adequate they're providing for adequate infrastructure for the city. Um, when Mr. Savine talked about the pavement plan, the thoroughfare plan, the water resource plan, the water system evaluation, let me put that in different terms. We have data that in some instances is over a decade old about us as a council being able to tell you, the community, whether or not your infrastructure is adequately supported. I see that as a critical issue for this community. So to talk about whether to raise or lower taxes, um, I think is the wrong question to ask. Um, I think the, the question that we as a community need to uh, continue to uh, grapple with through uh, the great participation that has existed uh, and that is to, to understand uh, are we adequately supporting uh, the community with the resources that we have and have we prioritized those in a manner that ensures the, the long-term future of our community um, that may mean lowering taxes it may mean raising taxes. I don't think we can answer that question today. We put in place tonight in this budget tools to help us answer that question. And so a part of that as a community requires us to have some discipline and some patience and some courage and some willingness to come together to understand what we need as a community and stop trying to tear each other down about whether you approve or support this or that, but to understand what our needs are and come together in a manner to support those. Um, now, what does that have to do with the, the average citizen? Well, we are about to, in two months, uh, review the, the boards and commissions, the committee participation. It's a great time for people to get involved in the process we're also going to begin the, the budget discussions in January this year. 
so there is uh, going to be ample opportunity for us to look at and understand what does it mean for us as a community to ensure that we're <coughs> adequately supporting the requirements that we have before us. Um, and I think that that's, that's really important for us to understand. It is, uh, I think it's wrong, and I, I, I didn't take this posi position for political means, and so I'm not going to get on a political slant of this. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter what the political answer is. To me, it matters, are we asking the questions that impact the long-term uh, vitality of our community? And so I would encourage this council for us to continue along that path. Um, to, uh, to do as we've done tonight in the budget. I, I couldn't be more proud of us, uh, but the work is just beginning because we don't know um, which street to fix next, and that drives me crazy. You know, how, how can we say we're taking care of stuff when we don't, we don't have a pavement plan in, in a city this size? You know, we have some ideas and we have a spreadsheet, but we, we don't know. And I, I just can't thank you enough as a council for being willing to spend some time uh, fixing that. Uh, our water plan, we talk about water resources. Our water, long-term water resource plan is based on data from 1994. That is completely unacceptable for us as a community to be able to say, are we okay or not? We don't know. We've committed a significant amount of resources to answering that question here tonight. And I couldn't be more proud of the council for being willing to do that. You know, some of this stuff isn't uh, all bells and whistles, and so it's hard to say, well, what's the end result? But I, I would argue that, that what you've done tonight, what we've done tonight as a council, is, is look to secure the long-term interests of our community and to, to tackle those things in, a, uh, in an analytical and thought, thoughtful manner. And so I want to you know, thank all of you for doing that. And I would just ask for the, the community um, to support the council in our efforts to come together uh, to look at these long-term needs for our community. They are critical. Uh, and, I, and I don't think anybody um, would argue with that, and that's my point. We need to find ways of common interest to come together, to work together, and support each other uh, through those common things. And. Uh, I think that's what you see your council doing tonight with the unanimous support of this budget. And I just want to, I want to thank all of you for your, uh, your basically volunteer effort to do that. I mean, it's been phenomenal for me to see the dialogue and discussion that's taken place on this council. And, uh, and I, it's, it's greatly appreciated. So I'll, let me stop um, there and uh, we will proceed to the next item on the budget, which is to consider an ordinance, uh, uh, but I'm sorry, there's, there's one more thing I needed to say in my notes. Mr. Savine didn't point it out, but I will. There are a number of things that we reduced cost for in the budget. Now, I don't have a laundry list to give you, but it is, note, it is worth noting that I would estimate close to a quarter million dollars of cost reduction that went into that page by page review. So this council did just not accept the budget as presented. That was part of the page by page review. Um, I mean, that's just a ballpark figure, but I think it's, it's comfortably uh, to estimate at least a quarter million dollars of cost reduction that, that's in there as well. So um, if, if y'all could uh, also roll that into your summary. I know it's a lot of information to take. You know, we've been working through this for, for months and trying to find a way to, to consolidate it in, in a concise manner, but that's, that's one point I think that really needs to be captured in this. Okay, sorry about that. Let's move on to uh, item number seven, which is to consider approval of ordinance 2014-21, uh, adopting a fee schedule. And Mr. Smeen, you wanna Thank talk you, us through that? Uh, just, I want to make one comment about what you just said. Uh, you're correct in the, in the way we did the budget and how much money we cut out of the budget. And yet, in addition to that, we spent several hundred thousand dollars extra money that we didn't have. So it goes to show that we can cut costs and still not cut services. I thought that was an important thing to, for us to note. Uh, the, the fee schedule is presented in front of you on page 17 of the budget. 
or excuse me, of the agenda. Uh, you'll notice that there are several items in here that range from recreation department to city fees for other services, and there's several chairmen of committees up here today that participate in this process. This is the recommendation to the council at large. Uh, and I'll just kind of go through them real quickly uh, to just highlight some of them. For example, the youth league fee for youth is going up from $35 to $45. This stays within our plan to where the city funds about 60% of all the cost of youth services. And the, these uh, citizens pay for about 40% of that. All the adult services, all the ball games, et cetera, for adults are, adults are paid for by their fees. Uh, there's also a non-resident fee in addition to that that uh, is, will be 15 bucks if you want to play in our uh, youth programs. Uh, city cemetery lots, you'll notice, are going from $425 to $600 and for residents and $500 to $750. For, res uh, for non-residents, we are looking at expanding our, the area of our cemetery, so some of those changes in revenue will go to that. I checked with Walt this afternoon, and we have sold 37 lots for both the east side and west side cemeteries through the month of May. So if you just put the numbers together, 37 times, say, an average of $600, that isn't, but about $20,000. And if you'll, our cemetery budget's running somewhere around a quarter million dollars a year. So the cost of lots is not the cost of operating the cemetery. We're, we have a multiple dog permit. If you have one more than one dog in your yard, we're gonna ask for that. Uh, we have also one, Interesting one is, I, I, did, I didn't know this, I'll talk to Nick this afternoon. The fire hydrant meter deposit, I said, what in the heck is that? And what it is, is whenever you do uh, meter installation, uh, it relates to backflow preventers and so on. It, we've, been, we've been charging $1,000, it is a deposit, it's not a fee that's charged, you get the money back when you bring the fire hydrant meter back. The problem is we don't always get them back because they cost more than a thousand bucks and some of the people just look at that as a good way of making, saving themselves some money. So we're gonna go up, the costs are about $1,200 a piece. If there's any questions, there's some count committee chairs up here that might be able to do a better job of answering what they meant. Okay, any questions about the um, schedule? Let me make one correction on the multiple okay. permit. What that uh, refers to uh, the ordinance currently allows, I believe it's three, up to three dogs. And so someone wanting to have more than three dogs at their residence would have to get the multiple okay. dogs. Okay, so it allows them to go above the three. Yes. It was a, an accommodation to some people. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else, other questions? Other questions? Okay, I'll here entertain a motion then. Mayor, I move that we adopt ordinance number 2014-21, adopting the fee schedule as presented. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Spain, uh, seconded by Ms. Zachary to approve uh, ordinance 2014-21, adopting the fee schedule as presented. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? <clears throat> all right, that motion carries unanimous vote. I'm finished, Mr. Nix. Okay. There you go, Mr. Nix. Mr. Savine said he's done. Do you have him on the clock or something? I'm amazed that he was done, done in that timely manner. All right. It's, it's an ongoing between Alan and I, good friends. Thank Where'd you. Go? I just want to point that out, Alan. Okay. <laughs> Your day's coming. I know it is. I know. I, I always get in the back. Okay. The, the next item on the agenda is to consider. Uh, Approving resolution 2014-10, uh, excuse me, uh, 09. Uh, it's resolution 2014-09, amending the list of holidays. And uh, it's interesting how this is um, contained uh, for the city to approve because it's it's in part of the employee handbook uh, as a part of amending the holiday list, which is a, a byproduct of the decision. The, the council has looked at uh, adding the, the city recognizing two, two holidays to the official holiday schedule, and that's uh, Martin Luther King Day and Veterans Day. And uh, that met through committee and then was uh, discussed uh, in the council. And uh, that would, would align the, uh, the city with the county and the state as far as the days that, that the city uh, recognizes those holidays. 
and uh, would, would allow us uh, to um, have been a total of uh, is it eleven? Eleven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thirteen. Ten. Would be thirteen. Ten. Count ten uh, holidays that the state recognizes that that the city would then be aligned with and the county. That'd be New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, Independence Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Good Friday, Memorial Day, Labor Day, and Veterans Day. Okay, and with that, I'd entertain a motion. Mayor, if I may say something real quick. Yep. I'd just like to say I, I think uh, I was encouraged by the amount of um, communication I got from the city employees about this uh, proposed resolution. I had some, skept some skepticism about giving some employees some other additional paid holidays, but I received lots of emails from employees that are really thankful for this opportunity because they really wanted to observe these days and respect the people, Martin Luther King, veterans. So very encouraged about that so i think it's a great proposition therefore i will move to adopt resolution 2014-09 second okay it's been moved by mr pendleton seconded by who's that mr wagner i give it to mr wagner okay <laughs> mr wagner to uh, approve resolution 2014-09 amending the list of holidays as presented any discussion Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Um, and I, I, I guess the, the other thing I'd like to add to that is that, and, and Brady, I appreciate your comment about the, the employees appreciating it. I you know, got an email from an employee that was talking about their father serving in World War II and appreciating the, the, the ability to take the day off. But, as we talked about in the council in the work session on on this this is this is for us and i guess for me in particular more about us as a community recognizing these days as a as a, as a moment to uh to pause and, and pay tribute to the reason the holiday exists it's not about just taking a day off it's a, it's about the city uh recognizing that you know veterans day is is a day of uh to to reminisce and and to uh, to honor um, so that that goes into that that decision and I uh, commend commend that all right the next item on the agenda is to approve uh, consider approving resolution 2014-10 to accept the 2013 sanitary sewer line rehab project so um, I guess Nick could we get you to give us a quick summary of that please sir Mayor, this is just a part of an ongoing effort by uh, Mr. Williams and his staff to identify uh, as a part of our studies and surveys of the various basins of the city for wastewater uh, collection <coughs> and uh, to improve these as we find the areas that need improving. Uh, we were also uh, able to identify these areas and fund these and uh, according to the letter from Mr. Williams, and from other information that I've received, that program has been successfully completed to the satisfaction of staff and will enhance this area as we continue to improve various areas of our city. All right, thank you, Mr. Nix. And I uh, appreciate the Public Works Committee's effort uh, on this, working with the staff. And um, if there's any questions for Mr. Nix, Mayor, I would move approval of resolution 2014-10. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, it's been moved by Mr. Nix, seconded by Mr. Hogan to uh, consider approval of resolution 2014-10, accepting the 2013 Sanitary Sewer Line Rehab Project. Discussion? Just Mr. one Swing. question. You'll hear this every time we start talking about paying people off. Have, we pay, have they paid everybody? Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Nick, I would just like to say uh, good job at $38,750 under budget. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any more discussion? All those uh, 
In favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, that motion carries unanimous vote. <coughs> and then uh, the next item is to consider approval of the si child safety funds. Um, and I'll ask uh, Chief Bridges, could you give us a quick summary of that? Mayor, Council, the uh, Code of Criminal Procedure provides that uh, court costs for child safety funds in municipalities less than $850,000. Uh, money collected by the court is set aside uh, for programs designed to enhance child safety, health and nutrition, uh, including child abuse prevention and intervention of drug and alcohol abuse prevention. Uh, for the last several years, uh, we have provided part of those funds to uh, several uh, different agencies, Star Council, uh, Stephenville ISD, Alexi River Children's Advocacy Center, and Cross Timbers Youth Conference. Uh, these, these groups requested funds and uh, uh, we have awarded them, uh, not all that was requested, but uh, they have, uh, have awarded each of those groups uh, a certain amount of funds to help meet some of their obligations. Okay, so I'll Okay, thank you. I hear a motion on that. Actually, I had one quick question. Okay, go ahead. It sounds the uh, uh, Luxie River Children's Advocacy Center sounds like just a wonderful program and everything, but they list their address as Granbury, Texas, and I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't any problem because it said we cannot allocate funding to anybody outside our city limits. I wanted um, to make sure we were okay with well, that. Uh, Chief, I believe this is the organization we had a few years ago that you're the president of. Mm -hmm. And I believe they do services here. They, they, they do services here in Erath County. Uh, I, I figured that. I just wanted to make sure that we, since it was one of the requirements of the fund, administration of fund that it's listed here on page 57. But it sounds like a wonderful program. I'm not questioning that. Part of the program operates in the city limits that we're funding, I guess. They do programs in the city limits. Uh, okay. And all I would say is that previous councils have approved the funding. Uh, I would imagine because we have active participation uh, with, with the advocacy center. Uh, and, and they do represent a, a significant number of people in the area. Mayor, Mayor, if I may. Yes. Sure, I think it's a good question, a good, good catch there. I don't have any issues with that, though, because I know that they service, what, Somerville, Hood, and Erath counties, and I can tell you from personal experience, we send tons of residents of Erath County and the city of Stephenville to this place. It's a wonderful place, and I think what, there's, not, there's, not a, there's not another facility like them, so I don't, to me, the, under the Code of Criminal Procedure, it talks about programs operating outside, I, mean, I think this is a program that's by all means operating inside the city limits, so. Okay, I just wanted to. That's a good clarification. Yes, thank you. No all right, okay. Thank you for that. Any other questions? All right, then I'll consider a motion. I move, I move that we approve the child safety funds. Second. <clears throat> okay, it's been moved by Mr. Wagner, seconded by Mr. McDaniel to approve the child safety funds as presented. Any discussion? <coughs> all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, that motion carries unanimous vote. And then we'll uh, move to the Planning and Development Committee report and uh, Mr. Warren. Okay, on page 67, uh, agenda item A is on annexation. And this is the list of people we came up with. We need to make one change, it's two local Builders from the Builders Association, and then uh, Ryan Norton with Community Development. We want to add on there. Uh, I guess I'll make a motion to approve agenda item A. Second. Okay, it's been moved uh, by Mr. Warren, seconded by Mr. McDaniel to uh, approve the. Uh, committee members as presented on page 67 with the uh, additions of 
the Builders Association to clarify the, the local builders and then secondly to include our community development uh, member of staff, uh, Ryan Norton. So any discussion on that? Mayor, do we, and I, I'm not trying to read intent into what Jerry's doing, but does, do we need to restrict that exclusively to members of the Builders Association? Local builders would include them, but that would also allow for others who might not be a member of that to participate also. Can I address that, Mayor? Uh, sure. As a committee member, we felt like it would be easier for an association to nominate and vote on their representative. So that's why we went with the Builders Association versus just ad hoc anybody that, you know, is a builder. It, it seemed like a more structured, organized way of getting two representatives from that sector. On that, the, uh, does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay. It doesn't address it, but it answers it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other <coughs> discussion or questions on that? All right, then we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor of the committee structure as presented uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, and uh, I want to thank the committee for their work bringing this group together. I mean, this is a way, as we talked to uh, uh, few weeks ago about getting involvement in the uh, annexation discussion that, that includes the different perspectives in the community and um, I guess that'll be looking for representatives to participate by September the 15th right Jerry mm -hmm. oh, okay all right great next uh, agenda item B economic development uh, you want discussion or a motion first why don't you just go ahead and discuss the uh, issue first? Okay. Uh, Mr. Wagner has done a lot of research on this, and I think he wants to discuss what he's come up with. Um, I didn't. I never had thought about economic development from the viewpoint of a city until I, <clears throat> I came to a council meeting in uh, April of 2012, and. Uh, the committee recommended that we drop the idea of economic development and the, the person that made the motion said that it was based on a study of some cities who did it and they all said it didn't work and the mayor asked that person to name the cities and they couldn't name any cities that they'd talked to. <coughs> uh, but they, they voted it down and dropped it then and I got interested in it and uh, this, this is not a real old idea. The Texas Constitution said up until <coughs> 1987 that you couldn't do it. So the Constitution said the legislature shall have no power to authorize any county or city to grant public money or anything of value. In 87, they basically changed it and said that the cities can, uh, said the legislature may provide ways for this to happen. So the legislature said at that time, you can uh, form a corporation to do it. And they, they called it a corporation A. And it was limited to bringing in new business and like industry and so forth. And after a while, they decided that that was too limiting, so they, they changed it and added a corporation B, which could do other things like uh, bring in retail or do things like uh, community senators, centers, recreation centers, and that sort of thing. And since then, uh, there have been 108 cities in Texas that have been uh, taken in the A corporation, 361 that have done B corporation, and I, I, I doubt if many have done an A corporation since B was allowed, because B lets you do everything either one of them will do. 114 cities do both, so there's 583 cities that have one or the other of those. And uh, I have talked to the economic, I have been to the economic developer in, in Pico, in Dublin, in Granbury, and I've talked to the ones in Brownwood and Roanoke. <clears throat> and I got a list of the ones in Texas who had them. This, 583 of them, and I started looking at the towns around Stephenville. I can, I'm going to give the council a copy of this after a while you can take home with you. This is about 35 cities. Uh, in the, starting at the north, Wichita Falls, in the south, Marble Falls, east, Waxahachie, and west, Big Springs, about 35 of them, cities in here. And the way I got to that map, I got this list of cities that had them, and then I found them on our map around us within 50 or so miles. And the ones on this thing that have a red dot 
or B corporations, the one with the A corporation are blue and the ones with both are green, and one that's orange, the other one that's black has nothing. Stephenville's the only one that's black. There's 30, about 35 here cities, all of them surrounding us, you know, and the one in the middle of Stephenville was black. And, uh, I, uh, I talked to the lady at Roanoke. At, I went, we, we studied this at, at the uh, videotape here in the, the, uh, the seminar thing. It wasn't very good because you could hear the answers but not the questions. So I went to another one in, uh, in Irving. There was a lady from Roanoke there, with a population of 8,000. <clears> and she said, they have, they have an A and a B corporation, and they're bringing in the money from sales taxes. And I'll talk about the problems with sales, sales taxes in a minute. Uh, she said they have, that with 8,000 population city, their sales tax income is up to 13 million. And ours is, I think, 5.3 million. Now, we may or may not be comparing apples to apples because there's more people around there, you know, to come to. But, and th they got their property tax down to 37 cents on $100, and ours is 40, 49. 49. And uh, so, uh, now what you have to do, you, you are, in, well, the, uh, the Brackenridge guy, you know, we, we supposedly lost that gun company to Brackenridge. I called that guy, and he was laughing, he said, we stole that from you, didn't we? And I said, yeah, how'd you do it? And he said, well, we had a building waiting for him. We bought the building with our sales tax money, and then we, let, we set him up with it. Southwest Lennon here burned not too long ago. I think they had maybe 25 employees, and they wanted, I understand, wanted Stephenville to do something to keep them, stay, let them, help, them help them stay. And I understand, not, well, Stephenville may not be able to do that without a corporation. We may still be uh, prohibited by the original Texas Texas uh, thing because uh, we haven't, we hadn't, we hadn't formed one of those corporations. So anyway, uh, I understand Glen Rose offered them several acres, and they got a better deal than that from Cleburne, so they're going to Cleburne. So it's not just a question of getting new, new stuff in here, it's a question of keeping what we got, I, and I think. And so we've got every city around us is raising money with, with uh, sales taxes that may be trying to get stuff from our, our people, you know. So it seems to me like we need to seriously consider doing something like that. And I, I, when I started checking into it, I, I just checked into Google and asked, uh, asked Google who knew about it, you know. And it basically said a lawyer in Richardson named Jeff Moore when we had those videotapes, he was on from the Texas Municipal League. He was speaking about it then. I went to the seminar in Irving, and uh, I asked the guy up there that was talking about it uh, who, 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 who could do it, and he said more. So I, he said, we, we have a big 259-page booklet that you can't find on the Internet anymore, but I'll, I'll send it to you. He sent it to me, and Moore is listed as the guy that knows about it. So I'm suggesting we get Moore to come talk to us, you know, because he knows all about A and B and there's other ways to do it, and uh, the, the, the deal about the taxes is this, like Breckenridge, you know, we, we can, I'm saying a lot, we can the city, and we are tax. we get a penny and a half tax, or one and a half percent, I guess, and one and a half cents out of every dollar, you know, tax to the city. Uh, so we're, right now we're filled up on that, but we, we can take some of that money and use it for economic development. I got a little chart here. Uh, I think if we, uh, Breckenridge takes a half a cent and gets a half a million dollars. There are 5,000 people over there, so obviously if we take a half a cent, you know, it'd be a million and a half or something. We don't need that much, I don't think. A fourth of a cent would be about 800 and something thousand. An eighth of a cent would be 400,000. Uh, Granbury only has 200,000. They have a different kind of a situation. They get 100,000 from the city and 100,000 from the county. They say there's not enough to do much. They, they think you need about three or 400,000. Well, an eighth of a cent, based on $5.3 million in income from a penny and a half, according to my arithmetic, it's 441000 Now, as far as politically, uh, that might, it probably might very well in the first year or so cause an overall tax increase because it might cause a necessity of raising the property tax. But it's like starting a business, you know, you're going to lose money at first, and so you'd have to raise the money and start getting people to come in. So um, I'm just asking, I guess I'm, I'm making a motion that we study it, and we do it by asking this guy Jeff Moore to come in and talk to us. And I, I talked to him. He said he, he's in Richardson. He said he would come here for uh, his his hourly rate, which is two two hundred and something. He figured it takes six hours to get here and, and get back. And uh, 
he, he does have to meet on some, with some city council every Tuesday night. We might have to do something about some night besides Tuesday. Uh, let me see if I got anything else I think so far. I, I've got some of these packets. Uh, I, I didn't, I'll let all you people on city council have, have this stuff. I didn't want y'all reading when I was talking because I don't like people reading when I'm trying to talk to them. So. <laughs> Good one, boy. <laughs> yeah. uh, let me see if there's anything else. Sounds like he's a busy man, boy. I think that's, that's all I can think of. Mayor. Mr. Hogan. I just want to uh, commend Council Member Wagner for this research. I know a year ago at the budget hearings, I brought up the question, why are we not a 4A or 4B? And at the time, I'd done some research on cities over 15,000 um, <coughs> looking at the TML website and it was and I'd like to find those numbers again Boyd on cities our size that aren't 4A or 4B because you, you think that your numbers are staggering when you get to a yeah. city our size that doesn't have an economic development corporation yeah. it's just eye-opening and when this whole deal with the gun manufacturer went down um, I learned from working in Congress that you don't listen to stuff you read on Facebook or on the internet you go and you talk to folks that make decisions because if you read what people are talking about around town I'm sorry it's not always correct well I went to Mr. Kaiser and I asked Mr. Kaiser why the gun manufacturer didn't come here and he told me because Breckenridge said Stephen Mill said well we got to get it up to code it's going to cost you this much to get it up to code Breckenridge the Economic Development Corporation said it's up to code we paid for it here's the keys well, where are you going to go I mean I'm not very smart but I'm going to go to the person that says here's the keys we already got it up to code for you it's got to be up to code I mean you you got to have it up to code for safety reasons. So that was kind of, when I heard that, it kind of opened my eyes and I did research on 4A and 4B and wondered why do we not have a 4A or 4B economic development corporation? And I just think it's, I hate to throw anybody under the bus, we hadn't been forward thinking enough. And we hadn't been willing to make the tough decisions. And Mr. Wagner's right, it might require us to raise the taxes uh, initially. But the return on investment is going to be, be far greater than, than, than that initial tax, raising the taxes. And, you know, just to give you an example, if you come to Stephenville right now and you want to start a business or you want to start a restaurant, where do you go? Because I, I, no, I don't know where to go. I mean, I guess you go to Steadco, and I know they do good work there. Maybe it's Steadco. Maybe it used to be City Hall. I don't, I don't know who it is. And we need to have a central place that you go that is the voice for economic development, and, and they have resources. I don't think we have the resources that Record Region has. And, and so I think Mr. Wagner's right. I think that I don't know if we have a clean enough motion, my friend, because uh, I – to, to hire this gentleman yet, but I think to authorize the staff to, to, to seek Mr. I forgot his name. Forget Jim, Jim Moore, yeah. But I think it's, uh, I'm 100% behind you, and I think it's time we look forward, think outside of the box, grow our city, and increase the tax base. Uh, I will say one thing about cities our, our size. There's 41 between 15 and 20,000 in Texas. 23 have B corporations, 6 have A, and 12 have nothing. Uh, and we're one of them. And I, I'm going to look at that again. I think most of those 12 are down close to close to Mexico, I'm not sure. But anyway. Mr. Mayor. Um, oh, no. Mayor. Yeah, well, that, that, that's all. That, um, I, I would assume since we just adopted a budget for 2014-2015, and in that budget we allocated $50,000 for economic development, um, Mr. Wagner, have you talked to Mr. Moore as to any prices it was besides his hourly rate of $200, you said, at six hours? He's, he, uh, yeah, I talked to him a while back, but this time I got an email and he told me it's either 215 or 225 or something. He estimated six hours, two to get here and two to get back, two to be here, so it'd be, well, six hours times, uh, you know, say 225. 1,500 cover. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so, you know, we've got 50,000 allocated to study this, and I suggest we start off with well, spending up to, up to 1,500. I'll make that motion then that we uh, hire Mr. Moore, and I guess at his hourly rate, of $200 per hour to conduct his initial interview with the city as to exploring this possibility. Yeah, maybe 225 is too something. But yeah, well, at his, hour, at his hourly rate. I might, Mayor, I might say yeah, I that we might just uh, well, authorize the staff to, yeah. to execute a contract with Mr. Moore and come back to the council because I don't uh, feel comfortable voting on numbers that we don't know. Well, that's fine. I'll rescind my motion and I will make a new motion of, that we authorize staff to contact Mr. Moore to negotiate a contract to, for him to come visit with us. Second that. Second. Okay, it's been uh, moved by Mr. Pendleton, seconded by Mr. Nix to um, authorize staff to pursue contract with Jeff Moore to discuss economic development efforts with the council. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? 
All right, that motion carries a unanimous vote. All right, item C, Mr. Okay, Warren. and item C, uh, land use, thoroughfare plan. Uh, I make a motion to ask community, uh, community development staff to research the firm and to <coughs> recommend for the land use and thoroughfare plan. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Warren, seconded by Mr. McDaniel to authorize staff to seek a firm to execute the land use and thoroughfare plan. Any discussion? Well, are we requesting proposals, Mayor, or are they going to be right? Yes. Right. That's to seek firms, plural. So that would be proposals? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. To seek proposals from firms. Right. All right. Uh, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, that motion carries unanimous to proceed with the uh, proposals for firms to look at thoroughfare uh, and land use plan. Uh, item D. Uh, agenda item D, we didn't take any action on that. Uh, that was, when we met, it was during the time of uh, the plumbing board, the other board meeting. We'll get back to that at a later date. Okay. Uh, item, agenda item E on curbs and gutters. Uh, motion, I make a motion to uh, ask the council to order a study to be conducted by the community development staff to determine if the ordinances should be changed. Uh, pretty much study. Okay, it's been uh, moved by Mr. Warren, seconded by Ms. Zachary to uh, ask the staff to proceed with the study to uh, determine if ordinance should be changed regarding curbs and gutters. Any discussion on that? Mayor, does that originate with us or with PNZ? It comes under P and Z. Okay, so we're asking P and Z to study this and make a report well, back. P and Z is under community development. But right now, so, so what we're asking then is for community development to initiate the process to take a curb and gutter ordinance review through P and Z to the council. Okay, is that what you? Yeah, that that work that way. Okay. But uh, the reason for it is. is uh, okay, Heritage Hill gets in there. There's not a curb and gutter out there. And if they are in it, which probably is going to happen, then to get a building permit under the, rec uh, the press regulation, they would have to curb and gutter to, to build a new residence out there. Uh, that's just one of the things that that needs to be studied to see if we need to make any changes in the curb and gutter regulation. So that, I mean, that's, that's can, can I add something to that, Jerry? Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> oh, I just, I, uh, I went out that Green Acres bunch and they were, they didn't want to cut curb and gutters out there and I studied that a little bit and the Environmental Protection Agency has written a bunch of stuff and studying it and there's a lot of places that it is best not to have curbs and gutters. You might, you might think, well, we ought to have them everywhere if we can afford it, but that's just not true. And I've given that, well, I've given part of it to Ryan and told him I'd send him the rest of it so, so he could, uh, you know, be aware of this thing. And the reason I was kidding that guy about Meadow Road, because I used to live on Meadow Road, and I know they don't have curbs and gutters up there in Dallas. You've got pictures of that too, don't you? Yeah, I do. Uh, okay, so if I understand uh, agenda item E, um, correctly, the, the committee has discussed this, and based on your discussions, what you want is for the staff to to uh, come come together with a set of recommendations that then would would flow through planning and zoning, and and uh, then to the council about what, if any, may need to be changed regarding curbs and gutter in the in the subdivision ordinance. Okay.
All right, is there any other discussion on that? Okay, so we'll proceed to, to vote then. Uh, if all those in favor, say aye. 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 If all those opposed? All right, that motion carries unanimous vote. Um, look at the curb and gutter study. All right, anything else from the Planning and Development Committee? Okay, great. Well, I appreciate uh, all the work from that committee and uh, a lot of things uh, moving forward in that uh, for us to consider. So thanks for, thanks for your work there. And then we'll move forward to the consent agenda. Mayor. Uh, Mr. McGannel. I would move approval of everything on the consent agenda with the exception of 12B1, Harbin Drive Repair Project. Jerry and I had a couple questions about it. Okay. Uh, here's second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. McDaniel, seconded by Mr. Hogan to approve the uh, consent agenda with the exception of item B1. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, that motion carries unanimous vote approving the consent agenda uh, with the exception of item B1. And with that, I'll turn the floor to Mr. McDaniel. You had a question about carbon drive repair project on page 83. Yes, I do. Is uh, Nick Williams the one to address the questions to? We're be fine. Okay. Jerry, did you want to ask him your question first? Or you want me to? Yeah, we'll get it. Okay. We'll get it. All right. Uh, Nick, from our previous meetings, we remember hearing several of us about the $75,000 cost to repair Harbin Drive. We didn't hear anything about the other $93,000 for the other part of Harbin Drive, so that kind of created some questions in our in our mind. Was this uh, the original part that's uh, $93,000 from Washington Street to Fry Street discussed at a at an earlier date, or is this our first time to see it? Okay, is the 168,000 in the current budget or the budget we just approved that begins October 1st? What the plan is, is uh, because we have some funds left over from the current fiscal year budget, we need to roll over approximately $150,000 from last year's budget to cover the majority of this project, whereby the budget we just approved would only, would only absorb about 18 Okay. And is part of that coming from the right of way, the right of way fund? Correct. The right of way maintenance fund. Okay. That was the only questions I had. Uh, Mr. Warren? Uh, that pretty well answers mine. I had mean, talked to uh, Chief Bridges earlier and uh, told me pretty much the same thing that Nick just said. That Back, uh, to get back to the original thing, uh, like Russ was saying, the only thing I remember hearing was like 75,000 repair. And, you know, we kicked that around quite a bit about maybe delaying that for a later time. But mm -hmm. Casey said it's going to take Carl a good long while to get their project. I realize we're going to have to keep keep Harvard open and running. So I don't have any objections. Mayor, I move approval. Well, I had a question. No. If, if, if we approve this tonight, when would work begin? Okay, well, I knew he was here tonight, so I knew he would. He probably needs to stretch Sanford anyway. Sanford would be able to answer that question. Sanford, you wanted to stand up anyway. 
the uh, full contract contractor and he'll probably work into this application. Into October. Why do we have to wait till October? We've got the contract document. Mobilization. Okay, so is there any concern about moving into October? And I know, Lord willing, this will be a problem, but uh, rain. The way we've got this project, this is a textile item, <coughs> structural flexible paper textile item. And then when you open up what they can put back in one day, it's not going to be like our typical tree. It's going to be open there, Thank you. All right. So, entertain a motion. Mayor, I move approval of consent agenda item 12B1. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. McDaniel, seconded by Ms. Zachary to approve uh, the Harbin Drive repair project as presented. Is that the base bid in the alternate as well, Mayor? That was my understanding of the mo was that your intent of the motion to include the total base bid and alternate? Yes, the total of $168,105 covering Harbin Drive from Washington <laughs> Street all the way to the Northwest <coughs> Loop. Okay. So I guess we, um, but why don't we have the minutes reflect that, that the motion includes the base bid and alternate. Um, please, Cindy, thank you. All right, any discussion? All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, that motion carries unanimous vote. And uh, at this time, I'll turn the floor over to uh, and welcome our interim city administrator, uh, Chief Brett Bridges. You, Chief? Uh, just some uh, information on some upcoming events. On uh, September the 9th, a week from today, we'll have another special council meeting to uh, have a public hearing on the tax rate. After that, to, after that meeting, there will be uh, committee meetings of the Public Health and Safety Committee and the Personnel Committee. On uh, September the 16th, there will be another special council meeting to adopt the tax rate and any budget amendments. Uh, after that council meeting, there will be uh, committee meetings of Public Health and Safety, Public Works, and Personnel. And then as a reminder to all the citizens, September 20th, we have the rodeo parade. Uh, parade, there'll be a lot of activities going on down in the park, so that should be a, a very fun day. And last, uh, for those who have not signed on to Mixel and you're interested in signing on to Mixel, uh, if you will text 76401, our zip code, text 76401 to 888 and that will get you signed up. Do that for yourself. That's all I have. Okay, great. Any questions for Chief? All right, and I, I appreciate your uh, your efforts, and I, <coughs> I'll note for the, the council and for the, the the meeting on the on September 9th, uh, we've, we've already received uh, numerous responses for a search uh, firm, and so we'll be discussing that uh, the night of September uh, uh, September 9th and uh, as far as the rodeo is concerned uh, and I know the rodeo committee is working on getting this out you know we're gonna have Western Heritage Week that that week kicking off on September 20th uh, and if you haven't heard I'm sure that that uh, you will soon it's going to be a uh, atmosphere like the 4th of July in the in the park that day with with vendors and uh, entertainment uh, live entertainment and different events during the day. So I'm um, looking forward to that for our community later this month. With that, uh, comments from the council members. Mr. Just, Hogan? Just a quick question. The Public Health and Safety Committee meeting next week, what will items will be on the agenda for that? Uh, we'll be discussing uh, revising the taxi cab ordinance uh, 
and uh, the meeting on the 16th will be a, a second meeting about the taxi ordinance and uh, parking ordinance. Okay. Pat, can you add the uh, beginning of discussions of uh, smoking in Thank you. public places or public, actually smoking anywhere in the city is, is the way I believe it that's needs what, to be. That's what I was gonna ask. Talked about. Can we put that as item I'm sure we can. two on the agenda? Thank you, sir. <laughs> and I would just like to mention that we may need that committee might need to look at separating out the horse and carriage portion of that revision of the taxi ordinance because there are significant requirements regarding uh, care of the animals as well as it's a non motorized vehicle and it does fall under a whole lot of different regulations. So uh, I can, my daughter was a carriage driver, I can get a lot of that info if you need that to the committee. That, that's why we're bringing it forward to get you all's recommendation and input on that. So, I'm okay. One, one more thing, Mr. Mack. Mr. Hogan. Oh, <laughs> Since I have the floor, the Coach Kerry Fowler radio show has been moved. We used to have it Thursday at noon. It's now Mondays from 6 to 7 at Legends Country Club. It's a live show. We'll have food specials and giveaways, mm -hmm. and we'll talk Tarleton football. And, mm -hmm. I'd appreciate it mm -hmm. if everyone would come out every Monday at 6 o'clock. We'd love to see you. <laughs> Wear some purple and white. All right. Great. Thank you. Mr. Wagner? I'll have to All right. Mr. Sveen? I want to say thanks to the city staff because they, several folks have doubled up on duties. And I just want to say thanks. I sat in Walt's office this afternoon and saw two of those people getting some extra duties today. So thanks. I'd just like to give a big applause and shout out to uh, all of our city employees who have to work outside every day. It's uh, unbearable. I, I commend you for your work in doing that. It's, it's been a long, hot summer. Hopefully it will be over soon. Pray for rain, all right? Pendleton. I have nothing, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Nix. Ms. Zachary. I would just like to basically second that, that I think the uh, city employees have just done an amazing job of stepping up and, and filling in, and, and it's been very impressive to watch. Thank you all. Mr. Warren. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You don't get to say so, anything, I don't get to say anything. That's right. I second that motion. <laughs> he doesn't have to vote on it until after he's through. Yeah, I don't have to call for a vote until I've commented on his motion. Oh, yeah. It's always, it's always something. So I got I got it's always something like that. Yeah, good try, Jerry. America. He could keep us here another hour if y'all wanted to be brilliant. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out, Mr. Well, well, Pat isn't going to lock the doors, I promise. Don't, I'm hungry. But. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to uh, just close with a, a couple of comments tonight. It's it's great to uh, to have, you know, the school year back is, for many have told me recently, it's like like the New Year's. And for the transition, the public safety uh, aspects of that, you know, the police have done a phenomenal job working with the, not only the new student load at Tarleton, but also the, uh, the school district and the transition with the new elementary schools open. And, you know, hats off to all of that. You know, the changes in the community are, are just all so positive uh, in that and, and just for the energy and excitement of the, of the university back in session is, has been wonderful. Uh, the, the comments that the council made tonight about the, the staff and, and the efforts they have gone to uh, should not be taken lightly and it just speaks to the resiliency uh, of us as a community. Uh, we are secure as a city and uh, we've got a lot of great things going on here. The future is very bright uh, for us uh, moving forward. Uh, as, as you saw tonight with the Planning and Development Committee, uh, looking forward, trying to look for innovative ways, uh, new ways. And so we'll just you know, solicit ideas from the community. And, and as you just heard the discussion tonight, uh, you've got a council that's willing to, to listen and, and uh, roll up their sleeves and, and work for you uh, in the community. And we're all moving toward, I think, with confidence, the ability to have a plan that we all feel uh, comfortable with and, and uh, to be able to execute uh, in the future in a, in a very positive way in a manner that will bring us together as a community. And uh, we've met recently with, with Tarleton, had a great visit. Many of the council members with uh, President Ottavio and his staff took a tour of the facilities out there. And uh, it was a great interchange and, and dialogue between us and, and Tarleton, uh, realizing that, that we're in this together and we got to look for ways to 
to make uh, each other successful. But also, you know, want to thank the uh, the, uh, the community for their involvement and willingness to engage with our committees. Uh, part of what you witnessed tonight, I think, is a is a transition in our um, in our council in the way that we're we're allowing the committees to to function as committees and and to talk about some of these issues and then bring them forward to the council with their recommendations. And I think that's a that's a result of, of trust and confidence in our in each other and our, our willingness to listen to each other as we move forward in these issues and you know I think our our perspective of, of working together uh, is going to carry and only build mo momentum from this point I just want to applaud again the great work on the on the budget a lot of work went into that but you know like that like they say um, this is where the real work begins now I mean that that's just getting us to a point <coughs> point of departure and, and I'm really excited about the month of October and what it holds for us as a council as we begin <coughs> some of our strategic planning development and really discussions in the month of October, November, and December that will guide us toward uh, January and discussions into the new year about uh, how to best utilize the, the, uh, the city's uh, precious resources. So with that, there's a motion on the floor that we adjourn. <laughs> Call and the I'll, question. Uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, this meeting adjourned at 729. <laughs> it's still daylight outside. <laughs> Thank you. Let me get my count. First fundraiser.